one of uh, the most popular types of bottom on the Gulf of Mexico is just basically rock piles. Um, scattered throughout the Gulf, you'll just see little rises, ledges, um, usually just hard bottom. And one of my favorite spots is about 10 miles offshore. Um, looks something like this, little diagram. So if you're going over to the depth finder, usually you're starting about 50 feet deep. And then as you see it start coming over the rock pile, you'll see some shows of fish. And then it comes up to about 45 feet. The, the big thing to know if you're looking for rock piles is if your bottom, you'll probably start out sand. Your bottom show, usually red, is not that thick. When you start to get to a harder bottom, that red gets thicker. So if you got your death finder four times zoom, you'll see that red might go from just a little bit to a nice thick red coloring. And that usually signifies that you know you're on hard bottom. That's ideally what you look for. So this spot out in 50 feet of water, different times of year, it's just loaded with different types of fish. It's it's nothing too crazy in terms of what you see on the depth finder, but it's one of my favorite spots, a spot that we keep coming back to year after year for grouper, snapper, um, and now hogfish, something we've we've really started to dial in in recent years. And it's kind of funny, on a recent trip, um, I told the guy I was with, hey, you know, we don't usually get a ton of snapper here. I've caught a few here and there. But when I sent down the GoPro, brought it, brought it back up and looked at it, the mangrove snapper were as thick as I've probably seen ever on a spot. Uh, switched the rigging up, got the snapper dialed in, and it was, it was a really good bite. Full moon, daytime, still ended up getting a bunch of mangrove snapper. The show on the depth finder was also crazy. Um, if you look at it, I'll put it on the screen right now, this red ball is all snapper. So when the GoPro goes down, you see this big red ball, snapper galore. So that's another thing to look for is if you're coming over to spot. So your snapper, if you're on a spot, you'll probably see them up off the bottom, up off the ledges, rocks, whatever it may be. They're sitting probably five to 10 feet up. So as your bait is coming down in the water column, so let's say your bait's coming down, what you might, your bait's coming down right here, what you might see is fish from here coming up to meet your bait. And it's something that's pretty awesome when you got good enough equipment that you'll be able to actually see Crazy. that happen. This, if you can see it, uh, that's 35 feet there, 40 feet, 45, and then 50 right about the bottom. So this show here is all mangrove snapper. Um, so as the machine's going, you can see them up pretty high in the water column. One of the, one of the crazier shows I've seen on mangrove snapper. And let, me, let me bring up the video here. So here is the going down. Speed it up a little bit. So GoPro's going down to the bottom. And on the drop, you can see fish starting to show up. Uh, mangrove snapper galore, just all over the place. And this is only 50 feet of water. It's just a rock pile. Nothing, nothing too crazy. More mangroves. And if you look at the bottom, nice hogfish right there as well. That's what we were trying to catch that day. Another hogfish, just a little bit of rock, nothing too crazy. Um, sheep's head on this spot, and I caught a few, usually about 50 feet as deep as you'll, you'll see them. Red grouper, lots of grunts. There's a gag swimming off in the background there. Um, gags tend to be very shy of the, the GoPro, um, but I'll show you something here in a second about when they were not. It got a little crazy. So lots of hogfish, lots of mangrove snapper on this spot that day. Um, this was after a full moon. After a cold front, so we had a north wind. It was blowing pretty hard. Uh, the snapper were extremely picky. They only wanted a very certain type of jig head with shrimp. And when we figured it out, we landed probably 10 of them in the span of 20 minutes. And, and they were decent size. The, the bigger fish would typically did get on the jig heads on those traps. Um, so you can see all the snapper coming through. Real big school. Pork fish as well. Not a lot of people know that pork fish are out in the, the gulf. But this spot typically holds pork fish. Never caught one. Didn't know they were there until I started doing this. Scamp grouper in the background. Park fish again. So very cool cool spot. Holds a lot of different types of fish. 
Okay, for a little better understanding of kind of what this spot is, here's a, a cleaner water day. This was in May. Uh, the previous video with all the snapper, that was in November. This was a, a May day where we got right on the, the zero out. Um, so scamp grouper, scamps, and there's a snapper up in the water column. A few more snapper. Nothing nearly as crazy. Uh, let me go forward. And you can see there's a little bit bigger piece of structure where these fish are are holding on top of. I don't know if you can see it as it's going real fast, there are a couple of sheep's head going by. Uh, I like to leave the GoPro down depending on how the fishing is for you know five minutes at a time if it's good just to get it up out of the way. If it's a little slower, I really want to learn a spot and how the fish are acting, I'll leave it down. You can see this one, 30 minutes, and then there's another 10 minute video after. So I picked the GoPro up, and then we drifted back. So you'll see a little bit of a structure change. And when we, so that now we start drifting here. And a lot of times you'll need to kind of re, if you're on anchor, you don't have GPS troll motor, just kind of get yourself readjusted, get back on top of the structure. So this is a, probably the, the meat of the, the rocks. Um, just some real good, there's a nice, let's see if I can get that, real nice gag grouper right there. Two of them. Sitting in the bigger structure. They like to do this, sit back a little bit. But they don't like the banging of the GoPro, so they, they typically will, will take off when that GoPro starts banging around. Um, nice gag right there. If you can see, he's very curious. But eh, like usual, another gag right there. That GoPro goes down, they take off. So this is uh, why the, the bottom will change that depth. This is probably a two or three foot high rock, so you'll go from 50 feet to 47, 48, and that's when you'll get those step changes. You're on the spot a little bit. There's another red grouper over there, red grouper, red grouper. Real clean water this day, so good viz. Makes for a good, good video on the bottom. Um, some cool looking reef fish here as well. So that's the first half of the video, and then there's another nine minutes. Very similar. Scamps, lots of scamps. Uh, scamps are a lot like mangrove snapper. If you're trying to target them, you want to fish pretty light. You know, shrimp dropping down. They like white bait and dropping down slow through the water column. Lots of grunts. Uh, since this is one of my favorite spots, I've got a couple other videos, different times a year. Um, here's a very close piece of structure. This, we are off to zero out a little bit, but on more hard bottom. So more hogfish, more snapper. More sheep's head. You hear that ticking noise, that's the uh, the trolling motor. We're drifting back a little bit right now. Lots of hogfish, lots of snapper, lots of sheep's head. They love that that hard cracked bottom or that bigger rock. So we didn't quite get on that you saw in the, the previous video. Uh, here's a little different look from another drop on the same spot. Um, tons more snapper. This is the same day when that big show was, but we were moving around a little bit. And if you can see right here, here's a roll off. And so this is where, if you remember the drawing, you're 50 feet here, you get up on top of the rocks right here, you're about 45 feet. So as this keeps going, I said, hey, let's get to the bottom of this, bottom part of this. Maybe we'll get some grouper. The grouper like prefer the bottom part when they're when they're hanging in their spot. Actually, there was a, let me go back. There's a, there's a gag sitting right there. If you can see that shadow, it's a nice, nice gag grouper. Sitting just off the spot. So this will come around. More snapper, there goes that gag right there. That's a big boy right there. You can tell when they, then they're gray and then you get a little bit of black on the bottom. That's a pretty big gag, that's probably 15, 16 pound fish.
I'll keep going forward. Okay. So now as it gets to, we're sitting in 50 feet of water. I believe the camera will pan around here. Okay, so here's the here's the camera coming around. So this is what your roll roll off looks like. There's a fish in somebody's fishing line right there. So it's basically just a a wall. It's not quite a ledge where it goes up under, but this is where your depth changes are, are occurring, and this is where the fish, you know, sit in the ambush and where you really want your bait. There's a little bit of a ledge right there. See that part goes up under. There's a hooked fish going up out of the way right now. Real small. It doesn't run that far. This maybe goes up under a couple feet. It's only maybe a one or two foot ledge. Great for fishing though. Because these fish are, are easy to get up and out from underneath. Some of the bigger ledges you fish, those big fish, they will not leave up underneath. Um, the rock piles tend to be a little better better to fish because you can get those fish up and out away from it. All right, so here's another video. This is a different day where we got very close to that little roll-off, that little ledge, which you can see there. Bam. So same structure, different day. You can see the water clarity is just not quite as good. Nice hogfish, scamp grouper. Same stuff. Another little female hog right there. But this bottom is, is nothing crazy, but it, it holds a lot of variety of fish, mainly those rock piles, little tiny ledges. Fish love it. Okay, so finally I want to bring up, this is a very calm day. You can see beautiful weather. Very calm day in December of last year. This is probably one of the colder days we had. Um, trying to hog fish on the spot, couldn't quite get them to to fire that day. But we missed the missed the structure, barely. Um, but what this allowed me to do is is, is see some crazy stuff. And we're about fifty or sixty feet off the spot at this point. We're we're not close. We start drifting some anchor line back. Oh, what's sitting there? It's a gag grouper, right beside him. Hogfish. And so this is a, another nice gag. He's got that white color, a little darker belly. And so he's inspecting what we're dropping. Um, we didn't have any dead bait that day. I kind of wish we did because the dead bait typically will outperform live in the, the cooler months. And this was, you know, late December, cold day. Um, snapper. So you saw that gag swim that way. There's another big one, another big one. They're about to come investigate as well. Fast forward, there's a gag coming around. Another one right there, there's another snapper. Another kingfish. So you can see here's a bait coming down that we kind of threw out. One kingfish, two kingfish, three kingfish, four. Inspecting this. Porgy, couple snapper. That's a lizard fish. Look at the gags. One, two. Uh, there's one sitting behind them. Another snapper. So here's. So the gags start munching. Start going to town. Lizard fish. These are little guys. Kingfish, curious. Snapper. So they were in a, a, a definitely feeding mood. If you can see, there's a whole school of gag grouper just sitting there. In those little dark spots. There's the big boy. There's a hogfish. All these fish showed up to, to kind of see what that was, but none of them wanted to inhale it. They're just kind of inspecting, feeling it out. Um, we were As we were drifting back, you can see the rock piles back there. Now we're probably about 30 feet as opposed to the 50 feet. So that's where these fish are coming from. They're coming from that rock to kind of investigate what we were sitting on. Um, another kingfish. See the gags sitting around that dead lizard fish. I don't even think that bait was hooked at that point. It was just kind of one we threw over. We were getting ready to leave. Uh, but there's six, ten gags just sitting there. There's a darker one right there. You should be able to see that one. And like that, they mostly swim away. More kingfish. 
But this is all in that same spot. So colder months, those gags are, are definitely, you know, sitting here. But that's historically what we've experienced. This is a number I've fished for probably 20 years now. And those cooler months, gags show up in force. Um, now that we know how to target hogfish, we started to target, target the hogfish here pretty much every trip. Get, get a few of them as well. Um, and the snapper. The snapper didn't used to catch as many, but I always fished heavier gear in the past. Uh, we would just fish for grouper and grouper only. Now I typically start lighter. And if I want a grouper, I'll throw out a bigger bait on the bottom, and it, 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 it works. So just as quickly as those grouper showed up, back to the rocks. They weren't too interested. None of them even ate that lizard fish. It's sitting there. There's another hogfish right there. So just something to keep in mind when you're fishing those rock piles. Look for that hard bottom. Look for where it rises, and that's where you want to be fishing. Um, if you do end up on the sand, just know you can probably get a couple shots at big fish. They will come out and off of it. But if you want to get many big fish, many snapper, get right on top. Drop your bait from there. All right, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know. Thanks.